He didn't even react when he heard the keys in the door. Why wouldn't them let him sleep? Oh yeah, I remember that that typo. Jamal had come once more to treat his wounds, but that was many hours ago. Still, a part of his mind registered the steps approaching him didn't belong to Jamal or Halim. <laughs> look at you now, you insolent brat. You look like something the cat dragged from the street. Um, talk dirty to me more, Haroon. I don't Abdel, know why you guys are dragging Hassan, it. Please carry him to the harem's common room. Put him there, on top of those cushions. Two slaves dragged Adnan too weak to stand on his feet and seated him on the designated place. Adnan's sight was unused to the light and the sun through the open windows hurt his eyes and made him blink. You're so much better. I know, I just have all this voice acting talent. I know. They should hire me to voice these games. Why has no one stepped in? Like, why has no one approached me with a voice act acting offer? Like, I just... Guys, come on. Right? Am I right? Another slave stepped in the common room, bowing when he passed in front of the vizier and placed a water jug and a plate of full food in front of Adnan. Did I already read that? He didn't ask for permission and attacked the water and the food at once. <laughs> Are you thirsty, boy? Not thirsty for that dick, motherfucker. I ought to bust a cap in your ass. Adnan glared at the evil man but didn't stop eating. You can all leave now. The slaves shared a pointed look and seemed about to complain, but the vizier raised a hand and stopped their objections. It's fine. He's weak like a baby, so he won't try anything funny. Right, Adnan? And you want to take advantage of this baby, don't you? Well, unlucky for you, this baby started teething. Put that dick in my mouth, and it's gonna come out bloody. As much as he would like to retort or jump at the man's throat, the vizier was sadly right. He didn't have the energy to try anything. The British voice needs working on? the. Br My British accent is perfect. I will not have you come into my stream and badmouth my British accent, okay? Alright. The wounds on his back were already healing, so despite being painful, they were more superficial than he thought at first. But he was still weakened after not eating or drinking for three days. He cursed his bad luck and kept eating. Adnan was left alone with that cruel, mean man watching him eat with the ever-present smirk. You're surely aware that once the Sultan comes back, I'm going to tell his majesty how you treated me. He told me no one would hit me or famish me as a punishment. So I'm sure he will be rather surprised about the punishment methods you use behind his back. The great vizier laughed heartily. Oh, my dear Adnan, you're so funny. And you know so little about anything. Do you know what the punishment is for a slave caught while trying to escape, according to our laws? Adnan could guess the answer in the vizier's tone. Yes, you little brat. The penalty is death. You should be glad I went easy on you. What's ten lashes and three days in the dungeons? His majesty will surely think I was generous with you. He made a dramatic pause. Here comes the final blow, Adnan thought with a shudder. Well, I better get on my knees and get started with that final blow. Are you, are you aroused yet, Haroon? Especially once he hears that his precious pet, the one he feels so fond of, hates his face so much that he actually tried to escape from his loving hands. 
How will he take the fact that his cute lover prefers the death penalty to keep warming his bed? Hmm? Oh, our poor Sultan. This will surely break his heart. Adnan closed his eyes, pained. He hadn't considered that, and it was true. How would Abd al-Rashid react when he found out? The vizier's smile grew wider, reminding Adnan of a big, dangerous snake. What's your punishment for lying and manipulating the sultan? I don't think he gets punished. In Rashid's route, I don't think Harun ever gets punished. He just kind of... Rashid's just like, how dare you? I won't let you do that again. I don't think he gets punished. He will be I don't remember so him getting punished. By your ingratitude, that I doubt he will want to see you anymore. Just seeing your face will be a reminder of your betrayal. Will it be the death penalty, or perhaps, will he be content enough with sending you to the work fields? Well chained this time, of course. And we'll need to have a word with the foreman so he's especially hard with you and doesn't take his eyes off you for a minute, knowing your escape history. Rashid's eyes came to Adnan's mind, his fond, sometimes worried face. Would he really react that way? You're gonna leave? Well, sayonara, Belphegor. Adnan couldn't be sure. It didn't feel too far-fetched. The man was used to flattery and absolute obedience in bed, and out of it, so... His legs and hands trembled with fear, and he was grateful he was sitting down. He had ruined everything, all that time working hard to fit in the palace's lifestyle, seducing the sultan all for naught. He was as good as dead. Of course. It's not absolutely necessary for His Majesty to hear about your ill-fated attempt. Oh boy, you really mean it? Adnan raised his head at hearing that. No? The snake smiled again sweetly and just as dangerous as a real one. I appreciate His Majesty, of course. So I'd rather spare him the disappointment and grief. But, at the same time, I have an obligation to him. He will want to know all that happened during his absence. If you were really obedient and agreeable with me, I could make an exception and turn a blind eye to your escape attempt. Don't you think? What?! Adnan couldn't believe his ears. I'll make sure not to mention anything to his majesty. If you give me proof of your loyalty towards me. Okay, so like, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to help you out with your taxes? I can do that. You're sick! How dare you try to make me help you with your taxes? That's something you only do with a trusted partner. The man drew his head back and laughed in a rather coquettish way. <laughs> However, a slip of the tongue is sometimes so easy. Alright, what do I have to choose here? Spit at him. How about this? Is this your fetish? Adnan gathered all the saliva he could and spat at the man's face. I wouldn't touch you even if you were the last man on earth! Go and whine to your precious sultan, or kill me if you want! I won't yield to you. Oh yes, stand up for yourself, boo. The man was red with fury. Adnan expected a blow, but instead the vizier took a step back and yelled. Guards! They came and dragged Adnan back to the dungeon, where he spent- where he would spent- where he spent another night before he was finally released. Reading is hard. By the time the Sultan returned to the palace some days later, Adnan's wounds had completely healed. How do you heal from ten lashes to the back that quickly? Harun had been very careful while whipping him, it seemed. I guess. Adnan! His Majesty is back! 
Aren't you happy? He was real careful with that whip. That no scar whipping technique he, he learned from his daddy, I guess. Oh, come on. Don't be so cold. I bet he will want you on his bed tonight. No scar whipping. Perfect for consensual BDSM play. Or punishing slaves and not letting the Sultan find out about it. Whatever, you know? So put a smile on your face and greet him as he deserves. A couple of boys around them nodded with enthusiasm. To be honest, Adnan wasn't in the mood of smiling. He had spent the last days considering his chances in case the vizier told Abd al-Rashid about his escape attempt. Let's all give a warm welcome to our majesty, the mighty and benevolent Abd al-Rashid. Your majesty. All the harem boys went closer to the sultan and tried to hug him or pat his back at the same time. All but Adnan, that is. <laughs> That's enough. I'm glad to be back home, but now let me rest a bit, would you? His eyes locked with Adnan's at once. An almost solid silence stretched around them, while all the boys studied Adnan and Rashid's reactions. In the end, the Sultan cleared his throat, smiling, but clearly uncomfortable with the audience. He couldn't take his eyes off Adnan. I must apologize, but I'm exhausted after such a long journey. A chorus of voices complained. So, I'm retiring to my rooms already. I promise tomorrow I'll tell you all the details about my travel. Some of the boys cheered, but Rashid was blind and deaf to them. He gently reached for Adnan's hand and guided them him to the exit door. Adnan, I've missed you so much. Oh boy. He held the boy in his arms in a tight and long embrace. He smelled good, something spicy and fragrant. Probably a scented body oil. Adnan breathed in and relaxed a little bit. Still, when the Sultan let go of him, there was a line of worry between his eyebrows. Are you alright? You look different. Moody, but that's not news. Have you lost weight? I've lost some blood and skin, you fucking dumbass. Adnan shrugged with uneasiness. The less the man knew, the better. A slow smile spread through the Sultan's features. Were you worried thinking of me? Alrighty. Now I must choose... Glare at him and say... Nothing. Um, and now I'm going to save. What the hell? He... He's so conceited and self-centered, Adnan thought, shaking his head in disbelief. Rashid chuckled at his reaction. <laughs> well, I had to ask. Don't blame me for having a light hope. He looked around and checked that they weren't being spied on from the harem's common room. The couple of faces on the window went back to their own business. In fact, I, for my part, have been thinking of you. Aww. Adnan arched an eyebrow in disbelief. Always the sweet talker, he thought. I brought you a present. Oh, a present? He wasn't used to getting anything from anyone, so when Rashid took a golden bracelet from one of his pockets and handed it to him, Adnan felt really confused. Go ahead, put it on. It's for you. Adnan studied the shiny item, making it roll in his hands. It looked expensive. Do you like it? The boy nodded with a little smile. When I manage to run away, I can sell this for a good amount and... Pay to join a caravan across the desert and a good animal to mount. Well, man, he's just some gold digger. Thank you very much, your majesty. Fucking hell. Seeing you smile is worth the price of that jewel. He took his hand again and led the way to his bedroom. He's so cute and so hot in bed. I love how reserved he seems at first. But how he lets himself go once he warms up. 
No fucking wonder her runes so fucking... No, just so fucking about getting Adnan to fuck him. Like, what the hell, Rashid? Do you have to describe in detail? The Great Vizier yawned, barely hiding it behind his hand, but he couldn't hide the erection in his pants. He wanted Adnan. Am I boring you by any chance? The tall man shrugged with a small sigh. All this talk about that brat. Honestly, your majesty, you sound as if you were seriously crushing on him. Remember, he's nothing but a slave. Just property. <laughs> That's a way to put it. Not exactly the way I see it, but I'll keep it in mind. And aren't you glad I'm so fond of Adnan? You were the one who found him and brought him to the palace after all. So you should be proud of how fitting your purchase was. The vizier looked aside with a grunt and mumbled his next words. I mostly regret my choice now, to be honest. <laughs> we know why. We know why. Because you were supposed to be mine, Adnan. But then Rashid took you from me. Well, don't. You serve me well and he makes me happy. Is there anything wrong with that? This is actually kind of a sad story if we look at it from Haroon's point of view. He saw Adnan, you know, work in the fields, and he was like, I want me a piece of that. I love this boy. Then he he brings him to the harem because he can't... Haroon himself can't um, <laughs> have any harem boys of his own. And then Rashid takes Adnan away from Haroon. Kind of a sad story. The vizier pulled a face again and squinted through the window. No, your majesty. Great. Uh, by the way, did something happen during my absence? If the vizier tensed up at hearing the sultan's words, he hid it really well. Everything was calm in the palace. Why do you ask? Has he told you something? Rashid frowned, confused and a bit more than frustrated. Who, oh, Adnan? No, you know how he is. He would never complain aloud, even if something big happened to him. He's too proud to tell me anything like that. But there was something odd in the way he behaved last evening. Something... different. He was more serious and moody, and seemed... worried. I wish he would open more to me. Mm. I wish he would let me fist him a bit, really open up. The vizier sighed again, and answered the sultan after putting on his best bored expression. I can ask around and tell you if I manage to discover something. Oh, thank you, Harun. Remember not to push too hard with the palace's tasks, please. You duplicitous son of a bitch. As long as you remember not to pick him too often. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You're right. Don't worry. That evening was a repeat of so many other dinner times with the Sultan visiting the male harem. He asked Adnan to sit by his side and then had dinner while watching some slaves singing, playing music, or dancing for him. The boys usually wanted to chat with him for a short while, and some of them always flirted and tried to be chosen by his majesty. At least Haroon gave him an option to do him, Rashid just sticks it in. Oh my god, you put the whole game into perspective. There is no option for having sex with Rashid. You either have it, or you have it. You're taking his dick and his cum. But Haroon, there is an option. Wow. Wow, this- I gotta make a game theory video about this. That night, Rashid played with Adnan's hair while they listened to the musicians. He didn't seem to be in the mood for talking, so after a while, Adnan spaced out and just enjoyed... Spaced out and just enjoyed of the music. Is that English? He didn't seem to be in the mood for talking, so after a while, Adnan spaced out and just enjoyed of the music. That doesn't seem right. The hand on his hair stopped all of a sudden, so suddenly, in fact, that even Adnan reacted with surprise. Is everything all right, your majesty? The man looked pained and uncomfortable, but he sighed and stood up. I suppose so. 
Let's see. Would you? Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you for choosing me, Your Majesty. Oh, Lord. Why did you have such a long pause between of course and thanks for choosing me? The boy smiled from ear to ear and reached for the Sultan's hand, who took it with certain reluctance. Yes, let's go. Good night, boys. God, he sounds so bored and uninterested. They left the common room and Adnan watched them go, tilting his head and wondering what was wrong with the Sultan. He seemed worried about something. It was unusual for him to be silent during the whole dinner. Anyway, that was none of his business, so he went closer to Leem and Jamal and sat down with them. An hour later, most of the boys were starting to tidy the room up and hang the hammocks for the night. Adnan yawned rather sleepy already and got to his feet to help them. You, Adnan, come with me. What could the great vizier want at that hour? Adnan followed him out of the room with uneasiness. The palace was shrouded in silence. The only presence Adnan could feel was the guards watching in their towers. W where are you taking me? What's all this about? All kinds of black thoughts were crossing Adnan's mind. The man was going to get rid of him or throw him into a dungeon again, he was sure. Shut up! Please, Daddy, I'm sorry. He walked the rest of the way to His Majesty's bedroom in complete silence, although it was obvious to Adnan that the man was in a terrible mood. The vizier all but pushed Adnan through the open door and left, closing the door at his back. Ah, uh, Adnan, about time. I was getting ready to turn in. Adnan opened his mouth to protest. He wasn't going to share the Sultan's bed with someone else again, thank you very much. Halim was one thing. But was seen? He didn't even like to speak about that guy. And what if Jamal came? But his harsh words died in his throat when he noticed Wasim wasn't present. He looked around. He could see the bathroom and the dressing room through the open arches, and there wasn't anyone else there. Rashid climbed to his bed and patted the empty space by his side while grinning. Come here. Aren't you sleepy yet? That was suspicious. Adnan hesitated for a moment and then walked to the bed. The bed covers were untidy and the whole room smelled of sex. So his seam had come, and then he seemingly left. What a fucking slut! He stared at the Sultan with confusion. I just want you to sleep with me, nothing else. Just sleep. Guess you already got your load out in Wasim, did you? Oh. Sleep, just sleep, the Sultan Shore. Why does Harun have to be a sexy bastard? Did you like it when he screamed shut up, Lindsay? Did you wish that could have been you he was yelling at? He untied his belt and slid out of his outfit, taking his jewelry off with great care and placing every piece on a low table. Then he joined Rashid on the bed. The man was already lying down on his side and kept watching his every movement with a smile. You look surprised. Is it that strange that I want your company during the night? Only for sleeping? Yes. Oops, I cut him off. Rashid chuckled, his eyes were already half lit up with sleep. I'm already sated, Adnan. So let's turn the light off and rest for the night. <laughs> Wait, what did he say? He's already sated? I'm already sated. Oh well, that's a comfort. I'm glad you... Uh, I'm glad you're loading up all the other harem boys. Adnan put out the only lamp still lit and got comfortably in bed. The pillow smelled of someone else. It was an alien unpleasant feeling that didn't fade out even when Rashid buried his face on Adnan's hair and sighed with content, spooning him and whispering his name before falling asleep. The next day as everything in Adnan's life started to fall into a pattern. He would spend the day busy with the harem tasks and spending some of his free hours learning to read, be it with Halim or on his own. Of course, Halim still taught him the rest of the abilities he was expected to master. Dancing, singing, playing chess, some general cultural knowledge like history, geography, or politics. The list was endless. And then, in the evenings, the Sultan would call for him just before going to bed after spending some quality time with another slave from the male or female harem. 
He would kiss him, pet his hair, and tell him sweet nothings. But most of the nights, nothing else happened apart from sleeping. It was really confusing for Adnan. Especially while having to endure the smell of someone else's sex on the Sultan and the sheets. Oh, I'm getting so hungry. Okay, we're already in the garden. What's the thing that you wanted to tell me but you couldn't say in the common room? Oh, shh. I told you it's a secret, so lower your voice. <laughs> bye, King? Who's a bye, King? <laughs> Spit it out already, or I'll speak louder instead. <laughs> Helene giggled and took a piece of paper from his pocket. Adnan glanced down at it with curiosity, but his friend didn't give it to him or read it aloud. Kaldun passed me this letter today. Is that the guard you're fucking? Ah, that's the guard who's courting him, right? Adnan wondered it seems so. I can't let you read it. That would be too embarrassing. But it's very romantic. <laughs> Sultan is a bi king? He's mostly gay. Adnan rolled his eyes, imagining the lame stuff. The letter surely contained. What was it with the palace and their love for cheesy love words? And he wants us to meet tonight! Oh, Adnan, I'm so thrilled! Oh, you really want to meet him? Alone? You're going to get raped, slut! I think I do, yes. He's so deeply in love, how could I refuse? Yeah, Nasheed has kids because he has to have kids as the Sultan. He literally has no choice. I know. I, like, are you ever hearing, um, are you ever hearing Adnan talk about how Rashid was spending time in the female harem? You don't ever hear that. You don't, the female harem is just there to pop out little bastards. That's all it's for. He doesn't like doing it. He probably when he's with the when if, when he's with one of the female harem people, I guess when he's with the female sex slave is what I'm trying to say. He probably just like um, jacks off like on top of their pussy and doesn't even like get in there. And then he's just like, okay, work work my jizz in there. Okay, I'm not I'm not putting myself in there. <laughs> Can you imagine? Adnan could think of many ways of refusing him, but since Salim's question was just rhetorical, he shrugged and let his friend talk. He has arranged everything so we can be alone without being disturbed. He says there's no risk of us being caught, that I only need to manage to leave the common room discreetly. Well, if you're sure about this, are you sure that this is what you want? Halim nodded with enthusiasm. Then I will help with whatever I can do, of course. Thank you, Adnan. I wanted to ask you to cover for me. <laughs> Thank you for offering your help. You can imagine it now? Well, it's the truth. It's the truth. The female harem probably gets absolutely no action over there. And they're probably, like, grinding on each other or something. Getting their pussies together. They're doing... They're, they're probably fucking each other. It's a les harem. That's what that is. And also... <laughs> Like, I'm on the Halim route, so... What's Halim doing? Get in with this guard. And why are we helping this? Adnan forced a smile. He was more than a bit hesitant about all this being a good idea. But if it made Halim happy, no need for him to be a buzzkill. Are you sure? This is like the tenth time you've asked me, Adnan. And yes, I'm sure. I need to chill, I'm going off? No chill on this live stream. I'm eating multigrain Cheerios and you can't stop me. It was already that time in the evening when the boys turned the common room into a huge bedroom. They were finishing hanging the hammocks and Sultan... The Sultan wouldn't take long in asking for Adnan's presence. You talking too much about the females? What? Someone sounds a little misogynistic. You don't like hearing about the women? 
The slave sighed but nodded to his friend. All right, go then. If someone asks me about you, I'll tell them his majesty wanted you to join us for a while. You're a girl? It, that's called internalized misogyny, Killer Viper. Look it up. And if someone asks me where I've been, I'll say the same. Thank you, Adnan. Be careful, and best of luck. Please don't have sex with him. I'm supposed to be having sex with you. Shouldn't you tell me to have fun? <laughs> yeah, that too. Halim happily winked at his friend, and they left the harem parting ways in the garden with all the discretion they could muster. You wish I was your teacher? What does that even mean? Adnan lingered in the corridor. Oh, this is all new stuff too. I just realized, because the skip button is disabled. Adnan lingered in the corridor in front of Rashid's bedroom, well watched by two guards until the harem girl who warmed his majesty's bed that night left and he was gestured to enter. Yeah, just, we were talking about women and we summoned a woman into Rashid's bedroom. He just came on her pussy. He was a good two inches above the pussy though, no contact. He didn't give any importance anymore, it was just routine. But that night he had trouble getting to sleep, and he couldn't even toss and turn in the bed because he didn't want to disturb the Sultan's sleep. He was too worried about Halim and couldn't help but imagine all kinds of scenarios. Albeit not strictly forbidden, Adnan was sure his majesty wouldn't be happy of finding out about Halim and the guard. And then there was the vizier. Adnan still felt a painful knot in his stomach every time he thought of that evil man. Would he punish Halim the same way he did with Adnan? He didn't want his friend to go through that. Oh my god. What if Halim got whipped like that? Oh my god. Adnan's heart clenched at thinking of Halim enduring the lash. Halim was too gentle and delicate and femme for that. And flamboyant and gay. The poor guy wouldn't be able to cope with the pain and the shame. No, if worse came to worse, Adnan should do something to help him, but what? He was so helpless in this damn place. In the end, he fell asleep amongst the nightmares of dark cells and sobbing friends. He looks fine. The next morning though, when Adnan stepped into the harem room for breakfast, Halim was already there, safe and sound. Halim! Adnan, hi! Thank you for last night. Did you get your rocks off? Was everything alright? Everything was perfect. I must attend His Majesty and His Highness at the dinner hall, but I'll tell you the details later. Jamal's master plan about to come to fruition. <laughs> oh lord. Ah. Alright then. What's his master plan? Is Jamal actually secretly the guard in disguise the whole time? <laughs> uh. As long as his friend was fine, the details could be damned. He wanted to see him smiling happily, as he was doing right then. He couldn't remember the last time he felt so relieved. Later that day, Adnan glimpsed his friend in the gardens when he was passing between tasks. God, I hate the face Adnan makes sometimes. This smiling, cocky face. It's like so weird. When he approached his friend, he noticed Salim was talking with a guard, a different one from his lover, and greeting and the greeting he was starting wait, and the greeting he was starting to shout died in his lips. He thought of turning and and he thought of turning and leave. Okay, that one's just that that one's not my fault. That's not correct. He thought of turning and leave. That's not correct. That's not my fault. But there was something out of place, something that Adnan didn't like but couldn't put his finger on. Then he noticed. Halim's face was tense. And the guard was doing all the talk while the slave listened. Oh no. So he fucked that one guard. And then that one guard talked with the other guards. And they were like, Hey, I know this real nice pretty femme boy. Uh, 
He's got such nice soft skin. He's all nice and tan. He's got this white hair. And he has this beautiful voice, just like a little girl. Oh yeah, you, you other guards should to try him out. That's probably what happened. And now he's getting harassed by other guards. Frowning, Adnan walked towards them. The guard, round face and big mustache, saw him and finished their conversation, saying goodbye to Halim with a wink and an ever-present grin. Hello, Halim? Who was that man? <laughs> oh, Adnan. He's... No one. A guard. Yeah, his outfit and weapons were easy to identify, thank you. But what did he want? Was he bothering you? Can you guys hear all my chewing? Halim frowned, something uncommon for him, and started walking away from Adnan. You could say so. Hey, wait! What happened? Adnan followed his friend, walking faster to reach him, and sink with his steps. The boy at first didn't want to look at Adnan's face, but after a long stroll in silence, he finally stopped and faced his friend. Kaldun, he told the other guards that last night, he had a great time, the best fuck in his life. Oh my god, <laughs> this is amazing. I loved hearing Halim talk like that. With that impression. Oh my god. And it was exactly like I just said. Um, Khaldun told all the other guards what a pretty bull he had sex with last night. Oh no, Adnan flinched. He could imagine the rest. He could imagine Haroon's, I mean, Halim's pink hole that the guard must have been so happy with. And Halim's juicy dick. He could imagine it all. His perky pink nipples. So now this guard, Abdel, was asking me to meet in secret with him. To have sex. Lim, I'm so sorry. Sex before marriage? Honey, you lost me. Even if Adnan half expected something like this to happen, seeing how that palace worked, it's still hurting to see Halim so devastated. I read that sentence wrong. The young slave looked close to tears, his mouth in a half pout that didn't suit him at all. Remember I told you that I've been living in a harem my whole life? His eyes were distant, as if he was lost in his memories. First in the harem where my mother served when she was younger, under another sultan. And we came here. All I have ever seen of this sultanate is this palace, this garden, this harem. Oh my god, usually Halim's so chipper. And he's like, everything is roses! Having sex with the Sultan is so much fun! I love working in the harem! But now he's all like, This place is a prison. Please let me out. I was trained to do this job since I was almost a kid. So it must be true that sex is the only thing I'm good at. The only thing I can offer. Halim, no! The only thing people see when they look at me. Oh my god, no. No, please, don't do that to yourself. Halim. I'm sorry I called you a slut and a whore and a thought and a bitch. All those times I did that, I'm sorry. Like, super sorry. The boy turned, giving his back to Adnan, and he could tell Halim was starting to, finally starting to sob very quietly. Please, Adnan. I would like to be alone right now. Oh my god, no! We're your friend! Come on, don't be a bitch! Oh my god, I called you a bitch again, I'm sorry. Appalled, Adnan stopped in his tracks as he went to put his hand on Halim's shoulder. Oh. Fine. We'll meet this evening in the common room, alright? The boy nodded and walked away, leaving Adnan with a helpless, confused feeling. Oh my god, Halim! That evening, though, things hadn't improved a single bit. Aleem, say, would you join me tonight? No, leave him alone. The Sultan was sitting in the center of the room, caressing Adnan's hand between between his. The boy turned to look at his friend. Wait, the boy turned to look at his friend at hearing his name. He was sitting by his side, 
but his face still had the same dark look of that afternoon. I'm sorry, your majesty, but I'm feeling unwell. Oh, what happened? Do you need the doctor fetch for you? No, no, please. It's nothing. Just a stomach ache. Hmm. All right. But please, ask for the doctor if it still aches by tomorrow. Oh, what a caring slave master Rashid is. Yes, your majesty. Thank you very much for your concern. The Sultan smiled fondly at Halim and left the room, most surely heading to the female harem to choose another partner. Gross. Some of the boys offered a sympathetic word to Halim and went back to their conversations. Adnan waited until everyone else was minding their own business before whispering to his friend. Halim, are you alright? The boy shook his head. Sorry, Adnan. I'd rather be alone. Still? I don't like to see you like this. Let's go for a walk in the garden. The fresh air will feel nice. He's been going to the female harem a whole lot this route. That's just because his parents are in town, probably. And he just wants to seem straight to them. Reluctantly, Halim let Adnan grab his hand and pull him to his feet. The boy sighed with annoyance, but followed Adnan to the empty, silent garden. Feeling a bit better, without so much noise? Halim nodded and sat on a bench. In fact, yes. Thank you. There were too many people in the common room, and the air was stuffy. Especially Jamal! <laughs> uh, he was making the air even stuffier in there. Adnan sat by his side and let the silence stretch until Halim decided to break it. The night was clear with a light breeze that made the garden a perfect place to enjoy a companionable silence, only broken by the soft gurgle of the fountain. You know, my mother and my grandmother were harem slaves. Kinda wish I could have seen your grandma in action. Seems kinda hot. Your grandmother too? Halim nodded and then sat up and gazed at the dark sky above them. Yes, and also one of my brothers. He lives in His Majesty's brother's palace in the neighboring town. His master isn't a sultan, but... He's wealthy, and I was told his palace is almost as big as this one. So, as you see, I was born to be a sex slave. That's what I am, and what I will always be. Adnan felt a bit helpless. There was surely a way to cheer Halim up, at least a bit. It was infuriating hearing how the boy pitied himself. It made Adnan's blood boil with rage and frustration. Did you know I was born in the palace's harem, too? You were? What? No, you weren't. Are you lying? Halim turned to look at him with surprise. Oh, really? How come? Adnan always avoided the topic of his parents, so that was the first notice Halim had about it. My mother was a harem slave, too. My father was her master. He wasn't a sultan, though. Just a civil servant, but a high-ranked one. Oh yeah, I kind of remember this now. That's nice. How is it that you didn't stay there? Adnan shrugged. He didn't want to enter into painful details. They wouldn't help cheering Halim up anyway. Let's say things happened. I became orphaned when I was six and went to live with my maternal grandparents. But I was a pain in the ass for them. <laughs> I used to slip out of the house at night and wander the solitary streets, climb to the roofs, chase the street cats, and watch the sleeping town. I think, um, on my last playthrough, he told all of this to Rashid. Really? Oh my lord, your poor grandparents were surely mad at you. Yeah, <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> I was damn reckless. <laughs> And since they were really poor, I was always hungry, so I learned to fend for myself. When I was not older than eight, I already had a job at the market. Adnan is ghetto? Oh, so young? Doing what? Mm, whatever I could help with, to be honest. Carrying the customers' goods to their houses, watching the stall. 
sometimes doing a bit of thievery. <laughs> Helene chuckled at that. What? Really? What if they caught you? <laughs> In fact, they caught me more than once. At first I played the coy and innocent child, <laughs> but after a while that stopped working. No wonder. What did you do then? I bet your grandparents were furious. Ah, uh, sure. I didn't go back to check in truth. I joined a caravan heading to the other side of the desert instead and did small tasks for them in exchange of food and a place to sleep. Halim opened his eyes wide as saucers, his problems temporarily forgotten. You've been to the desert? Wow! How is it? I always heard it's hard to survive in it. Bitch, it's just sand. What are you so excited for? Uh, unless you travel with a caravan, <laughs> yes, almost impossible. So for years, I'd worked for some merchants. Every time they needed to cross the desert, I joined them and took care of the camels and horses, cleaning and feeding them. I also put up the tents at night and other tasks. The desert is really cold at night, you know? And sometimes, a hot wind starts to blow. Soft at first, but then it picks up and makes the sand fly around. When that begins, you better find a good spot to hide, because it only turns more and more dangerous. Halim's mouth formed a perfect O out of surprise. Anion couldn't help but wonder that something would perfectly fit into that O shape. Dangerous? But it's just wind, right? It's just wind, until it turns into a storm. Except that, instead of raining water, it's sand that twirls in the air and falls on top of you. You can even drown in it if it manages to cover your whole body. Sand covering your whole body... I can't imagine, and I don't think I want to. <laughs> no, of course you don't. The last sandstorm I witnessed was so strong that, when it went down, I was alone in the desert with the two camels I was taking care of and the remains of our camp. No one else. No! Did the other people die? Adnan shrugged. I never knew. I went back to the nearest town, sold the camels, and made enough money to live for a whole year. <laughs> Halim shook his head in disbelief and chuckled amused. Yeah, fuck those guys. I hope they're all dead. I didn't bother checking even for one second to see if I could save any of their lives. I'm all about that cash money, Halim. I can't believe you. You can't be serious. Ah, sorry to disappoint you, Halim. Life outside a palace is tough. You must do whatever it takes in order to survive. What can I say? I'm impressed. I still don't know how you managed to survive for so long. Especially being just a kid. Adnan laughed with his best proud smile in place. <laughs> well, you can't tell by my frame. But I'm pretty good with my fists. And I'm a fast runner, too. You should see how deeply I'm able to get my fists in a man. I pleasure them better than anyone else. Really? You must show it to me sometime. I've never been in a fight. Who's talking about fighting? Honestly, everything you're telling me sounds so horrible and dangerous. Ah, but it feels great. Being free, being able to decide where you want to go and what you want to do, without no one to order you around. It's the best feeling. Helene stared at him in silence. I guess... I'd never known. Oh crap, I made him feel sad again, and it was going so well Adnan thought, internally cursing. Halim. No, please, don't apologize. Thank you for telling me more about yourself. It's all really interesting. I hope you can tell me more another day. Relieved, Adnan answered with a grin. Of course. Anytime. It was already late and the Sultan would call for Adnan at any moment, so they went back to the common room and helped with hanging the hammocks. Helene looked a little better than before, for which Adnan was glad. He wasn't looking forward to talking about his family. But to be honest, telling Halim about his life as a free man felt good for Adnan too.
Remembering the freedom... Remembering the freedom, the times he'd gotten away from trouble just thanks to his wits or fists. They put a proud smile on his face. He had to tone his cockiness down that night, because even the Sultan noticed he was acting different from the normal slave-like self. Uh, tell me more! Adnan chuckled, amused by Halim's curiosity. Since the other evening when Adnan had at last told him some things about his past, Halim had been bombarding him with questions. Alright, what do you want to know? If the last time you ventured into the desert, you endured such a frightening sandstorm, would you ever go back to the desert again? Why, of course. Would you dare? Really? You're brave, Adnan. The desert is worth it, believe me. And storms are rare anyway. I've only seen two in my whole life, and I traveled across the desert dozens of times. You like how uh, Isaac already left the stream? Yeah, I bet he did. I bet he did. Isaac doesn't care about me. He's a big old meanie. But do you know where I want to travel next? Are you guys still in a call together? Helene seemed about to say something, but he bit his lower lip and muttered instead. Where? You're still here? Uh-huh. You probably have us out halved, don't you? You're probably doing something else, and then you just heard your name and then you came back. I want to cross the sea in a ship. I'm so jealous of the Sultan. His Majesty can travel across the sea whenever he wants. I want to feel that. The feeling of traveling over the water, seeing no traces of land around me. Hmm. Adnan, let's go back to our reading lesson. Well, you better have a drawing to show me after this stream, Isaac. Because if you don't have a new drawing to show me, I'm going to know you are lying. He thinks I'm lying to myself with my dreams of traveling again, Adnan thought. It was a slightly painful thought, to be honest. Was Halim right? He should content himself. Was Halim right and he should content himself with harem life? No, never, he decided. Tell Halim his thoughts. <sighs> Halim, I know you're fond of his majesty. He's a nice person, I'll give you that. But one day, I'll regain my freedom. In ten years, when your sentence ends, right? He, he's under a sentence? I thought he was a... I thought he was here for life, y'all. Is this just like a sentence thing? Weird. I didn't realize this was decided in court. Adnan realized he had been on the brink of telling Halim about his escape plans. After what happened the other time when the vizier caught him, he didn't think Halim would take it the right way. A part of him wanted to tell him anyway, especially when he remembered how hurt and disappointed Halim looked when he would visit when he visited him in the dungeons. But he wouldn't make that but wouldn't that make Halim worried? I, I'm losing the ability to read. He was still grieving at that guard's stupid reaction. No, this isn't the right moment to tell him. Only Allah knows if the moment will eventually arrive or not, but it's not now. They focused again on the reading lesson. Adnan with reluctance since he still struggled to link words together. Halim with a proud smile on his face at watching Adnan progress. That's quite right. Now the next line. Halim! Ah! Have you ever heard the guard talk before? I don't think we have. Oh, oh, Adnan thought. That was Kaladun, the guard Halim was seeing. A hard wrinkle appeared between the boy's eyebrows. Kaladun. Thank you for that? Thank you for what? What did I do? How are you today? Ugh. 
What? Cal Cal How are you today? Cal How are you today? I am well today. How are you today? The young guard's smile faltered. In the end, seeing the lack of enthusiasm in Halim's expression, Khaldun offered the slave a rolled paper and left. Another letter? It better be an apology. An apology it is. Well, we'll never know. And he shredded the paper into a hundred little pieces that dropped to the cobblestone ground. Let's go inside, Adnan. This place stinks. Oh my god, yeah, stand up for yourself. Yas, you don't need no man. For a moment, Adnan stared blankly at the pieces of white paper, flying around with the breeze and then followed his friend inside of the building. What are we doing here? Some days had gone by and Halim still looked down most of the time. Adnan tried to attach himself to his friend on every occasion he had, even if he couldn't do much to cheer Halim up. He hoped at least his company counted. His Majesty had left the male harem with Jamal. Jesus. We're in the end game now. Jamal is really starting to put the final pieces of his plan in motion. And the usual small group of onlookers was already crowding around the people in the garden outside of the Sultan's window. Surprisingly, Halim had asked Adnan to join them. He hadn't seemed interested in peeping before. Adnan was surprised and a bit annoyed. Halim giggled and avoided his eyes, clearly embarrassed. <laughs> I just feel like it today. Would you like to come with me? <gasps> I know why he feels like it today. You remember how last time we were out here? Adnan... Adnan mentioned that, like, all the other boys were touching each other while peeping. Lee wants to touch us while peeping. It's gonna use that as an excuse to touch us. Oh my god. Um, i probably choose yes I, just for today. Alright, yep, just for today. You can fondle me just for today. I know, how are we going to do this while watching Jamal? That's going to be impossible. Watching Rashid and Jamal f <laughs> fucking was so shameful. If it was anyone other than Halim who asked him, <laughs> Adnan would certainly say no. Oh god. Just today, okay? Please, don't take this for granted because I doubt I'll accept any other day. Honestly, I don't know why Halim is doing this, because I think if Halim literally just told Adnan how he felt and then he wanted to get with him, did a bug just fly on my face? But anyway, if Halim was just honest, I think, I think Adnan would genuinely just be like, okay, sure, like, we can get it on, Halim. Like, I really think that. Obviously relieved, Halim took his hand and led the way to the window. Thank you, Adnan. The boys who were currently watching through the hole moved aside at seeing Halim and Adnan approaching, giving up their turn to them. Well, I guess they have manners about peeping. The sight was surprising. Adnan hadn't thought before that watching two men having sex would be so hot. Gross, that's Jamal, bro. Did he look as attractive as Jamal? Oh my god. He's simping for Jamal now. When his majesty was giving him head and arched and he, he arched his back and moaned. Jamal was doing that right then. Speechless? It's quite a show, right? Adnan nodded, feeling himself stir. Still it didn't feel right. He knew the Sultan didn't mind being watched, but it still felt intrusive for Adnan. 
He wasn't used to the palace's customs to that degree yet. Yes. This is just one of the customs of the palace. Watching the Sultan, the highest man in the land, having sex with a boy. That's just, that's just a common palace practice. It's a custom. Either accept our customs or get the hell out. He was about to turn and tell Halim that they should leave when the boy grabbed his hand and placed it on front. Oh, when the boy grabbed his hand and placed it on his front on top of his hardness. Adnan muffled a gasp and stared at Halim's flushed face. Do you... Do you ever think of that threesome we had with his majesty? And how good it felt? Every day, Halim! I should lie and say that I don't, Adnan thought, his heart madly pounding against his chest. Yes, I do. Crap, why did I just say that? Halim leaned closer and kissed his lips. It was a sweet, soft brush at first, but after the first moment, Halim's tongue licked at his lips and Adnan lost it and caught all that s and caught that small tongue sucking on it. Before Adnan could react or realize what he was doing, Halim had pushed him against the wall and thrown an arm around his nape. The young boy rubbed up his whole body up against him. Halim effortlessly aligned their erections and hooked a leg around Adnan's hip, dry humping him in a slow, torturous way that made Adnan shudder out of pleasure. A little giggle at his back made him come back to reality. He should push Halim off. He really should stop kissing him. But then he saw with the corner of his eye that the giggling boys were all also making out by their side, and Adnan decided he could stop giving a fig about modesty at least for a short while. And Halim's skin felt so soft against his. His movements were so expert and accurate. He was really good at this. Soon their hands were searching each other under each of their clothings. When the rubbing stopped being enough, Adnan caught a glimpse of the Sultan mounting Jamal from behind. Hard and fast, making the headboard tremble with every thrust. <sighs> he closed his eyes and focused on his own pleasure, and on pumping Halim nicely with the long... With long and strong strokes, he had Halim's tongue on his earlobe, making him tingle. Adnan pushed Halim and exchanged places with him. It felt good having him against the wall and able to move at his mercy. He attacked the boy's pale neck, sucking on it. Who's pale? Halim ain't pale. Don't leave a mark. Be careful. Adnan built him, bit him lightly. Wearing the pal wearing the place with his teeth as Okay, one more time, let's try this. Adnan built him light bit Adnan bit him lightly, worrying the place with his teeth as softly What do you mean worrying the place with his teeth? What does that mean? Worrying the place with his teeth. I don't I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Their hands flew on each other's members. Mm. Halim finally whimpered and hit his face on Adnan's shoulder. Uh, oh, Adnan. He's close, but so is he. <sighs> he took Halim's cheekbone in his free hand and kissed him deeply, getting lost in his lover's heat and his own pleasure. The two of them gasped, their hips bucking out of control, and they let go of their loads more or less at the same time, squirting on the ground and their and their outfits. Oh no, our clothes. He gasped for air and pulled a face at seeing the mess they made. Well, it's not that important, he thought with a, at last with a shrug. But then he looked at Halim and his heart had dropped. He embraced his friend, still short of breath. Hey, Halim. Don't worry. Most of it will come out when washed. Halim refused to look back at him. Oh my god, you can't... You can't drag us out here and then refuse to look back at us afterwards. It's not that. Adnan frowned. What then? What's up with the drums? 
No. What? What's going on? Stop this. The boy pushed Adnan off and took a step back. He looked dejected. I shouldn't have initiated that. I owe you an apology. Bitch. The only apology you'll give us is getting on your knees. Confused, Adnan shook his head and waved his hand to show he didn't care. It's alright. We did more than that with the Sultan that night. And I know this kind of things are normal here. No! <laughs> uh, that pussy no. No! 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 The shout took Adnan and the other boys still making out next to them by surprise. Halim covered his mouth, frightened, and walked away. Sighing, Adnan followed him. Actually, it was better to have any kind of conversation far from his majesty's window. The man was surely busy right then, but those windows didn't do much to muffle the noise. Wait, Halim! Would you care to explain me what's wrong? Big teardrops were rolling down Halim's cheeks. Adnan tried to hug him again. No! Stop it! I don't deserve it! Bruh, relax. You are... You are the only person in the world who doesn't see me as a sex toy. And I go and act like that... so shamelessly. Yeah, you were acting like a... a kind of a whore. I mean, I know I've called you that before, and I said I wouldn't do it again, but... If you act that way... Adnan decided he'd had enough of that. He wiped a fat teardrop off Halim's cheek and kissed his reddened face. Shh. What are you saying? You have a lot of excellent qualities. You're clever and sweet and a good person. And of course I don't see you as a sex toy. Halim looked at him, his lower lip trembling. You're one of the best people I've ever met, Halim. I like you. I like you a lot. <laughs> really? It's true, really, really like. To show him exactly what he meant, Adnan kissed him again, this time on his lips, a full-fledged snog. When they parted, the two of them s stared at each other, slightly breathless. Did I make myself clear? Please, stop with the self-pity. What? Halim laughed and threw himself on top of Adnan, claiming his mouth again. Are we really here to practice that harvest dance again? 